You guys have been loving the animal series. I have lately been doing, and I appreciate everyone who has enjoyed these challenges and given us brand new ideas. But let's do something completely different and see if we can beat the game using only certain types of food. Now, this might sound like I have a lot of choices, but unless it resembles food or there's a reference such as the anime or Pokédex, I can't use it. Oh, and it has to be edible. On top of that, I've slapped on a couple of extra rules to make this run more challenging. So with this in mind, comment down below if you guys think I can beat this challenge or not. And if you haven't done so already, hit the subscribe button, ding on the notification bell. With that said, let's get gaming. I think it's easy to say who we're going to be playing first and foremost. <laughs> <laughs> yep, this handsome British icon. Oh, uh, we have a pest problem. What is going to be difficult, however, is our starter Pokemon as well. They don't scream much food to me, and this guy looks like he'll dine in Hell's Kitchen anyways. In the end, I chose the duck, because at least duck can be on the dinner menu. Rare. Rare? It's f quacking. Exactly! He's alive? We'll nickname each member a dish, so we'll call Quaxley Cresingham, a duck the chef recommends. Plus, no owner will choose play Coco, so eventually this run should be challenging. But for now, a couple of water guns will do the trick. What do you mean she has to take me to school? She nearly burnt my duck. Okay, let's catch some Pokemon. Oh my god, it's Peppa Pig. I catch the pig because Quaxley isn't a duck everyone would eat, unlike this fun bird. I mean, it's holding the leak as it is. Plus, I prefer bacon to duck, and that's what I call our new starter, bacon and train it up before finding this. There is no way, I've just started! Oh I can't use it, obviously not being a type of food. I mean, who eats cottonweed? But someone is going to get lucky, so no big deal. I mean, you can have my sandwich. No need if I have a delicious team. Eventually, we do bump into this guy who loves to make food just like I. But to not use duplicate Pokemon, I won't be using any food type monsters that appear on his roster. But he also gives us this, which we can use, because it's a bicycle. We do eventually take on the Mona again, but with our picky, it would be easier. Right? I'm Peppa Pig. Well, this is fun. I take my first L, but we still get to move on, and I decide to spend the past hour EV training our delicious pig. I'm sorry, where's the option, I like cooking Pokemon? We're eventually free on independent study, and I have not only all the restaurants on Misa Goza to try, but I have the whole Paldea region to explore. With all the available Pokemon to eat, I set up the most amazing picnic with the help of today's sponsor, Tokyo Treat and Sakurako. Tokyo Treat is a monthly Japanese snack box with up to 20 of the most exclusive and limited edition seasonal treats from Japan. And if you're also looking for the most traditional and artisan snacks, then you could grab this month's Sakurako box. Sakurako helps local makers to bring their cultures in the comfort of your own home or out and about, allowing you all to experience the traditions of Japan that has been passed down for the last 100 years. But instead of talking to you guys about it, let's try this mum's box out. You ready? Uh-huh. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, to start off, we have the Tokyo Treat Moonlight Sakura. It is the Sakura Starlight Snack Fest. I love the peach ones. Banana. And caramel. Oh my god, it smells. It smells like. Oh. Oh. It smells like banana. Three, two, one. Oh god. It just tastes like banana. You look at it. It's just an ordinary Kit Kat. But it tastes like caramel frappe. Amazing. You like it? Mm hmm. Tokyo Treat, you've done a good job. But look at this, ladies and gentlemen, the snack guide for volume 27. And yeah, it tells you all about, you know, the maker highlights, the local businesses there, how it's made. Next up, we're gonna try a couple of the Genji pies. There's two in this. Oh no, I've just broke mine. 
Oh, Japan, you have my heart, you have my heart. Every box includes an easy to use cultural guide booklet to explain everything you get, including allergies and information on the recipes. I absolutely loved trying the Sakura Matcha. And my girlfriend is always a fan of the Sakurako box, enjoying the Japanese tea, as well as the beautiful tableware for your home or for your picnic sets, such as a Sakurako tea glass. <coughs> And right now, you can use my code MORERYAN So make sure you order before the 15th of May to order this month's box. After our luxurious picnic, we arrive in Cortondo. This is home to the bug type gym leader, but hopefully, with all my round stats, this should be easy. We also learn Covert, which is a lot stronger than a rugby tackle. Surprisingly. Also surprisingly, Peppa Pig pushed the olive in the basket. Katie owns a sweet shop as well as a gym leader, so here's two challenges. She starts with Nimble, and Bacon gets annihilated instantly. This is going to be a lot harder than I thought. If I'm struggling against bugs, what am I supposed to do against the toughest trainers in the region? Well, back to Weeby training. On the next attempt, I now outspeed. Even though Double Kick does big damage, we're in a much better spot, taking it down as well as Fat Spiders. But the teddy bear is the problem being much more bulky, and one Fury Cutter takes us down. So, for my next trick, and also my last resort, I go out in the fields to find one good move, Body Slam. However, there's a problem. It's all the way over here, so I take a big road trip up north and to this very spot. The move that I'd like to call, if I don't win, I'll cry. But I cry anyway when I find this. I can't even catch it, why? Eventually, I find what I'm looking for and pray to the Pokemon Lord that I will have some sympathy. This better work. Yes! Tarantula goes down after two, which leaves the bear. He uses one big Fury Cutter and we tank it. So one more wins us the match. But I'm not looking forward to the rest of the game. Your cakes are too fattening. You're selling apples with holes in them? Stop. But sir, these are appling. Oh my god, you are an idiot sandwich. But I take the guy's advice, and I'm on a hunt for our juicy apple to join the squad. But being rare, I found this instead. This is the third shiny I've found in an hour. What is going on? Luckily, I am able to catch this one. And if you join my Discord server, you can trade and battle with like-minded trainers such as yourself. In addition to grabbing some cool shinies that I caught, the link is in the description. Hey, Apple! What else do you want me to call it? Our next destination is to take on our first Titan Cloth, but this is a recipe we are after. Residents of Paldea eat cloth a la Gilo, I think. So we have to try, and with the help of Varvin, we manage to take it down. Here's a sandwich on me! What? What is that? At least our bicycle enjoyed the sandwich and we're able to go quicker now thanks to the wonders of food. Next we arrive at Artisan, which is home of the grass type gym. I'm hoping this goes a little better than last time, but on the plus side, at least I can farm for some more oil in the gym challenge for my grill. Oh god, he beat me to it! Frazius is a menace for his artwork, but everyone knows I'm a menace for cooking. Bacon was up first against Petalil and dodges the sleep powder, meaning we take it out easily, and Smolinth was cooked in two, leaving only his pseudo wudo. It terrestrializes to grass type. But we could connect paralysis, and after using Trailblaze, it then outspeeds and takes us out, leaving only the apple. We hit hard with a few pounces, but we just fall short, giving us yet another L. However, on the next attempt, the same occurs with Pestle and Smolov. And I kid you not, I was this close to winning. Now I know how the chef feels like in the kitchen. Oh my god, finally. It's two in the morning. Okay, I said that way too soon. This took me a lot longer than planned. But we got extremely lucky, although at this point my confidence has been booted off. With two badges down and Bacon evolve into Oinkalone, it's time to catch our next Pokemon. On the way to our next Titan, we go and catch our next dish, Clovalahijo. Although we call it King Crab because there are multiple recipes and crab dishes you can have before we take on the Big Bird Titan. For once, we have the advantage, King Crab takes it down with very little issue. Arvin, it's still undercooked! We've had a nice easy run against the birds, but next was something a little more challenging. We have to go against Team Star, who can be more intimidating. Just like the previous runs, the minimum for a Star Raid is 3 Pokemon, so it's a 3v2. So surely this must go my way. 
Fortunately, I had a plan. King Crab has access to fighting moves, so he was up first against Ponyard, but well, quite effective Rock Smash takes it down. This leaves only his Star Mobile. It's speedy and destructive, but we could counter that by lowering its defenses with Rock Smash until we go down. Then use Pounces from Apple and Tail Whip from Bacon to set. Once its defenses were low enough, one big body slam breaks the car. That was a lot easier than I thought. No more apples getting washed up! Next, we arrive in the LaVincia, home of the electric type gym. And even though our team is slightly outnumbered, we have got some pretty good move coverage. But first things first. Oh my lord. This cooked beautifully. After some food, buying a new phone, and my crab dancing the Mona's team array, we were ready to take on Iona. She starts with her watch roll, and I send out King Crab to get an early lead with one rock tomb. Next was Belly Bolt, and I switch to Apple to eat a water gun. All I can do is chip with Pounce until we fall. Bacon is now out, and we go for Dig, and thanks to chip damage from before, it goes down. Luxio is next and intimidates, so we switch back to King Crab. We get paralyzed and barely hang on, but take it down, leaving only Miss Magius. It terrorizes to Electric and takes us down, leaving only my pig. All I can do is Body Slam, fight through Confusion, tank two Charge Beams, and just take it out. This wins us our third badge, and we're really starting to make some progress. But before we carry on, we're off on a hunt for our next Pokemon. Just outside the city, we can find a Slowpoke. This isn't a food specifically, but its dex entry shows that you can eat its tail, and apparently it's very delicious. I called it Smoke Tail based on Gen 8's curry dex before taking on the Fire Star Boss Mela. We're able to use our special attack and TMs we found to our advantage. Torkoal's draw ruins my initial plan, so I switched to King Crab to take it out with a couple of rock tombs. The same follows with the Star Mobile. It does eventually take us down to a blazing talk, but Smoke Tail retaliates with one simple surf. With that, we defeated the Fire Star Boss with little issue. Next was taking on the next Titan. This one specifically is extremely bulky, and without a current move set, this is going to be challenging. On top of that, Earth Eater makes it immune to ground types. I start with Rain Dance, so my surfs hit even harder than usual. He hits hard, but we hit harder as it flees. Luckily, Arvin is there to help, and we manage to take the big worm down. Arvin! The chicken is as dry as a f***ing camel's f***ing in a f***ing desert storm. See, even the dog thinks it's raw. Next, we arrive in Cascarafa, which is home to the water type gym. You may think this is easy. I mean, we've got an apple on our team. But with it only knowing the moves it already has, I think it will sit this one out. At least we got to try this beautiful dish beforehand. We arrive at the gym but the chef runs away like a coward. At least I know I won't be hiring him as head chef at the loser BLT. Regardless, we push through the desert and over the hills to get to the markets. Oh my god, that seaweed's a stunning dish. Can you buy that for me? I own million dollar restaurants. Do you think I'm a joke? <laughs> no, I'm a <laughs> random encounter. After getting more EXP, we're ready to go. Knowing Trailblaze, I start with Bacon against the loser and cook the fish. Next was Wood Trio, and thanks to our speed boosts, it's an easy Oko, leaving only his crab. Trailblaze was just short, and one big crab hammer takes us down. However, Smoke Tail gets avenged, taking it down with Zen Headbutt. With four badges down, we've just showed who's the better chef in town. Although, next up was against the team star boss, Atticus. But before we do, I go on a hunt for our next member, and being Spain, we catch the finest bull, and I call it Wellington, before making our way to the tag tree thicket. From there, we can find loads of apples for our little apple to enjoy, and have a growth spurt into Appleton. But being poison type, I bench our apple, and start with King Crab against Skun Tank. We do get poisoned, but two stomping tantrums take it out. Next was his Rever Room, and takes us out with Iron Head, I send out Wellington to intimidate before switching back to Bacon. We luckily outspeed and a quad effective dig takes us out with little issue. Followed by Muck, leaving only his star mobile. We just hang on after Noxious Talk, but poison damage eventually knocks us out. Wellington is back out, intimidates again, and we hit as hard as we can with Zen Headbutt. Ah, oh, come on, I missed, of course. It's safe to say we have lost after missing a couple more Zen Headbutts. But on the next attempt, after changing moveset, you are joking. But Smoke Tail saves the day and comes in clutch. With that said, I am shutting it down. 
We're shutting down the biggest of our problems in regards to food, we can swiftly move on to the city of the finest dining in Paldea. This is also home to the normal time gym leader, where the challenge is to discover the correct order, which I presume is his favorite. Are you ready to order, sir? Uh, yes, can I have medium serving of rice balls with a hint of lemon, beautifully cooked. So I order, and this is what came out. The gym leader will show you good food. Getting insulted by the chefs, at least we can get to take on Larry and his poor taste for cuisine. Larry starts with Kamala, and I get a swift knockout with a raging bull. We hit extremely hard against this Dodon Spars, although it paralyzes us, and the second one takes it down. This leaves only Hysteraptor and intimidates us. It does to our slides to a normal type, and we barely hang on after Air Slash, but we're fully paralyzed, so we fall. King Crab comes out and finishes the job with a couple of brick breaks. With that said, that's another badge secured. Stop with the fruits, I'm a meat lover. Once we gave Nimona a lovely walk in the park, we were ready to move on and catch our final squad member. There is one particular fruit I like, but two things. One, it's pre-evolution sweat is only edible. And two, it's color doesn't really resemble much of a mango steam, the fruit it's based off. So you know what that means? Full odd shiny hunting. A few inches later. Oh, we got it. Shiny bond sweet. That was a pretty quick three hours. After some time grinding out raid battles and evolving to Steeny and eventually into Serena, as well as Smoketail having a shell friend to join the party, we were ready for our next gym. However, this one is a little different as it is the only gym that introduces double battles. On top of that, she uses ghost types, so Bacon will have no luck. After putting up a warm-up show, Rhyme is ready to fight. She starts with Mimikyu and Bennett. We bust her disguise and hit hard until Mimikyu went down. We get a stat boost from the audience and just survive Icy Wind, taking the Ghost Bear down as well. This leaves only Houndstone and her terrestrialized toxicity. Fortunately, even though our bull goes down, the opposing lizard electrocutes its ally, putting the dog to sleep once again. It does hit hard, taking down my team, other than my juicy apple, and we tank one more hyper voice before bringing it down with apple acid, winning us another badge. Next, we head back to the desert to take on our next titan. This one is a little different being from the future, but I had a way around it. Go hey, come back here! I send out Smoke Tail and send the rain before hitting a super hard surf, taking it down in one. After a very long shiny hunt and difficult gym battle, we're finally back on track. Although Arvin's cooking hasn't improved. I don't want to stick around for any more sh <laughs> embarrassment. Our next destination is at Alfenada to take on the sidekick type gym leader, but she also uses fairy type moves for coverage, so I know who to bench. Nice. The gym challenge consists of yoga. My crab seems to like it very much. But we get to challenge Tulip and start with King Crab against Perigirav, two egg scissors, taking it down. Gardevoir does come out and crits us, so I send out Mango Steam to retaliate. A couple of drop kicks take it out. Next was Aspafra and does finish us off, and also take down Smoketail with Shadow Ball. So it's all up to Bacon. We managed to take down the Ostrich with Body Slam, Eat a moon blast from Florges and two more body slams takes it down. That was a close win, but with seven badges, we have one more to go. And again, this one I'm not looking forward for. We've got to go back up the mountain to tackle Grusha and his ice types, but ice is a big weakness in my team, and I'm unsure if we can beat it. Regardless, we press on. And on the plus side, the snow slope run was quite fun to do, but this is Glacido Mountain. This is where everything can go wrong in a second. I start with King Crab against his Frost Moth, one Rock Slide being quite effective and taking it out. Next was Bear Tick, who couldn't survive another Rock Slide, and although the Titan hits hard with Liquidation, a Brick Break was enough to take it down, leaving only Altaria. It terrestrializes to pure ice, and it hits us with Dragon Pulse, so Anger Shell kicks in, meaning one more Brick Break sweeps his entire team. That was a lot easier than I thought, and we now have all the gym badges, but we're not done yet. Ah, so your Chef Ramsay I've been hearing so much about. You're not as scary as I thought. Hop into Hell's Kitchen and we'll see how miserable I can make you. 
It's safe to say we don't like fairy types, so we take Ortega on. He starts with a zoom arrow, and although it's capable of extinguishing flames and reduces our attack, our shiny fruit takes it out with very little issue. Next was Wiggly Tough, and we spam Trop Kicks to reduce its attack, but we get paralyzed after a body slam. We do take it out eventually and switch the bacon when Dash Boom comes out, but get a free switch when it misses, so a couple of Iron Heads takes it out. This only leaves the Star Mobile, but our attack is pretty low already, so I switch to Wellington, cut its attack, and tag the Magical Talk. I was expecting Steel Roller, which it then uses on the second turn before we hit a couple of smart strikes. We eventually go down, but with our attack stacks restored, Bacon is back out, fights through confusion, and hits hard with Iron Head, eventually breaking the car. Hey, that's not nice. You are a massive donut, aren't you? You're having too much fun. Just like me and the gang. Darling, let me get this straight and cut the bullshit. <gasps> I know you're the big boss. With one more Team Star Boss down and one more to go, I set a course for our final Titan along the way. This one is the False Dragon Titan, so I'm expecting some lovely delicious fish. We do take on this huge catfish and scare it off with my big juicy apple. But there's another fish to deal with, a size much more suitable for the restaurant and easier to cook. But even though we take it down, listen here you donkey. It's cold and raw. But this is the best one yet. I'm done. I'm f done. Get out! Regardless, his dog recovers from the disgusting sandwiches, but with five badges down and Arvin preparing to go face to face with Toro, we're ready to take on the last hurdle for Starfall Street. This time, the boss specializes with fighting types, a type I want to have as my next head chef, so I could see some potential here. <laughs> oh yeah, that'll do it. However, we're at a disadvantage because her team covers a lot of my weaknesses, so I have to tread carefully. She starts with Toxicroak and hits hard with Sucker Punch, but a Psychic from Smoketail gives us an early lead as well as taking out her Persimium, but we're quite low at this point. Next was Lucario and finishes off with a simple Dragon Pulse, but being also weak to fighting, Wellington comes out and retaliates with Raging Bull. However, our angry cattle was put to rest when Annihilate avoids Sen Headbutt, giving it an easy takedown. Mango Scene is next and does take a hit, but with close combat lowering its stats, and how items being banned, Acrobatics puts the monkey down. This leaves only her star car, but this thing is dangerous, taking down our fruit and hitting extremely hard against bacon. This leaves only apple, and being bulky, we manage to hold it off as it continues to set. One more combat talk gets us down the half, and a dragon pulse thankfully wins us the match. With all star bosses taken care of, and Cassiopeia revealing the not very secretive secret, we still have some work to do. First, we head back towards Misagoza to participate in the Pokemon League. We do have to conduct an interview first, but there's a problem. I can't find Peppa Pig anywhere. We do eventually go against Rika, who specializes in ground types, and I have just the team for it. He starts with Wishkash. Tropkick is an easy Oko, but next was Camerupt. So, to avoid losing Mangosteen, I switch to Smoke Tail, but we fall for Yawn. One surf is enough to take it down, but we fall asleep when Dugtrio comes out. It chips away to Earthquake, but we wake up in time and take it down. Donphan does finish us off, so Mango Steen is back out and we're quick to knock it out, leaving only Quadsire. It does throw our size to ground types, so we're able to hit hard with Trop Kick, though it wasn't enough and it poisons us. Regardless, a second kick takes it down, and we're off to a strong start. Next was Poppy, and this spicy one is the Queen of Steel types. She starts with Copperaja, and I send out Wellington first. One Raging Bull was too short. It says with Stealth Rock, and we do take it out on the next turn. Corbinite is out, and we do some decent damage before going down to Brave Bird. Bacon is up next to quickly retaliate with a simple Body Slam. Bronzong is next, and knows Levitate, so I have to switch. We eat an Earthquake before taking it down to Fire Blast. Her Magna Zone, however, takes us down to a big discharge. I then send out Mango Steam, use a simple Trop Kick to disable Sturdy, followed by a high jump kick. This leaves only her Tinkerton, who turns to pure steel, and another big kick takes it down. Hello, it's me, Larry! <laughs> this time, Larry uses flying types, and my two fruits are at risk here. So I play Risky and send Smoke Tail against Tropius. 
He goes for Sunny Day, meaning we hit hard with a Fire Blast before switching to Apple to take a Solar Beam, followed by an Air Slash, and we knock it down. However, his Altaria knows Ice Beam, which quickly retaliates to our Apple. I then send out King Crab and take it down to a couple more rock slides. Starabda was next, and to avoid close combat, I switch to Smoke Tail and eat a big Brave Bird before getting an easy knockout with Ice Beam. Oricoria was next, and I switch back to King Crab, eat a Revelation Dance, which activates Anger Shell, and not only we take it down, but we instantly shatter Flamigo's Terra Crystal, giving us another easy win. All that's left is Hassle, and I'm not looking forward to this one. He starts with Neuvern, and I send out Bacon. He connects the Super Fang, and we retaliate with Play Rough. A body slam later, taking it out, but we're in a bad spot. Next was Dregolage, and get a critical hit, but we still fall. I then send out Smoke Tail. He's a big Thunderbolt, and finish with an easy sidekick. Haxorus is up, and again we hit hard, but it's not enough, so Wellington finishes the job. Flapple does hang on and gets us low, but Smart Strike eventually takes it down, leaving only Bax Caliber. Its attack stat is scary and finishes off our beef. So I send out Mango Steen to hit a big play. Are you kidding me? Finally, King Crab was able to tank one last Glaive Rush, activate an Anger Shell, and manage to outspeed on the second Rock Slide, giving us one lucky turnaround. With the Elite Four done, all that remains is the champion. Oh, no chef's lounge or fine battle room, just you stuck on the roof. What kind of champion are you? I can easily cook your team, chef. She starts with Esparfra and I go for King Crab, who can hit hard with X Scissor and take it down. Avalog is next and after a rock slide, we fall. I then send out Smoke Tail to finish with Fire Blast and King Gambit hits that hard, we're left on 4 HP and deal big damage with Fire Blast. We eventually fall, but Mango Steam is able to take it down with a high jump kick, followed by a couple of drop kicks on the loser. From here, we can sweep her Go Go, but her terrestrialized Glamora takes my grassy friend's victims, leaving only my pig. One more stomping tantrum was just too short. One terrible as later, and. We stand tall once more and deliver the finishing blow, defeating the top champion of Paldea but I'm not finished cooking in the kitchen because I still have some work I need to do. And first and foremost is against Clive. But in reality, it's not really Clive. It's actually the director. Or maybe his name is actually Clive. I don't know. I'm the true team star boss. Is that BS? I can smell it from here. He starts with Orangaroo and constantly makes us yawn, so I'm having to switch continuously until it starts attacking. From there, one X scissor from King Crab takes it out. A bomb of snow is next, and thankfully we flinch it with rock slides, and the second one takes it out. Gyarados is next, and I turn to Wellington for intimidation stat drops, meaning we can safely take it down. Houndoom is next, and instantly falls to stomp in tantrum, and we hit hard against Poltergeist, even with a willow wisp burn, and take it down, leaving only his grass cat. I switch to Mango Steen and tank a flower trick before hitting hard with acrobatics, eventually taking it down. With that, we beat in direct equival, but we're still not close to finding the star boss. We've got to wait until nightfall to catch the big boss, so we catch up with Arvin back at the lighthouse in search of his father. We find out he's in Area Zero, and to prove our worth, it's Master Chef versus Apprentice. He starts with Chunky Squirrel, and I send out Wellington to instantly sweep with a huge close combat. Then switch when Scovillain comes out to King Crab, who tanks the Fire Blast, and one easy rock slide takes it down. Toad Scroll is next and instantly takes care of my crab. So I send out Mango Steam, eat a sludge bomb, and hit hard with acrobatics, which takes it out. Next was Garganical, who sets up a stealth rock but goes down to two tropical kicks. A high jump kick does major damage on Cloyster, but Icicle Spear finishes us off. So Wellington is back out and finishes it off with a couple of more smart strikes, leaving only his pet dog. It terrestrializes to Dark Tyke, but sadly, Intimidation and Play Rough reduces my attack, meaning we don't hit hard. So Bacon is out to hit a big Play Rough, leaving it very low, eat a critical crunch, and finish with an easy body slam. Thanks for our fight, little buddy. Gordon, Gordon. I'm not your f***ing mate. Even though we show our apprentice who is the best chef in Paldea, we still need to build a team to help. Luckily, we can now head back to the academy to finally meet up with the team star boss, Penny. She has a team of evolutions, so this fight can go either way. 
She starts with Umbreon, so Wellington is up first, and we hit super hard with a close combat. She retaliates with Psychic, and Smart Strike takes it down. Oh no! Well, I screwed this fight up, but there's still time. Bacon taking down the Dark type Fox. Next was Flareon, so I make the switch to Smoketail and eat a big Flare Blitz before hitting hard with a couple of Surfs. Jolteon was up, so I make the switch to King Crab, but it paralyzes, so it still outspeeds and takes us down. Bacon is back out and retaliates with Stomping Tantrum, eventually taking it down. Up next was Vaporeon, and it misses a Hydro Pump, so we were just able to take it down with Body Slam. Leafeon is next, and we get the Paralysis with another Body Slam, but we do eventually go down. I send out Apple to chip away with a couple of pounces and survive long enough to bring it down. This leaves only her Sylveon, who terrestrializes and ends my Apple's suffering. I then send out Mango Steam and hit hard with some Tropical Kicks, eventually taking Team Eevee out. That was a lot tougher than I thought, but Clive gets involved, and he's a little bit more lenient than I. All that remains is one trainer who's been with us since the very start of the run, Nimona. Is it just me or did she know I had a fruitful team? She starts with her Lycanroc and I go for my Apple, our Acid taking it down. Next with Gudra and it does take us down to a Dragon Pulse but Smoketail retaliates and chips away. But Ice Beam is just too short so Smoketail goes down too. This isn't looking good. King Crab is next and quickly finishes it off. So next was Pormot and takes us out. Mango Steam is up now and hits hard with Play Rough, allowing us to catch up. The Dunsparce also takes major damage from a high jump kick and a drop kick is too much for the snake. Orphworm was next and once again high jump kick does major damage. Plus we dodge an Iron Tail so we get a free knockout. This only leaves her Skeledurge who terrestrializes the fire type and I hit as hard as I can with high jump kick. But we do fall to Torch Song. Next was Bacon, and we hit a super effective Stomping Tantrum, but a critical hit stops us in our path, leaving only Wellington. Thankfully, close combat is enough to seal the deal, and we've just become the strongest trainer in Paldea. Well, almost. We do have to head down to Area Zero with Arvin, not only to find our ingredients, but to hunt for his dad. But upon descending, we find out his father passed away years ago, and all that remains is an aggressive AI. This is the final fight in the game, so final guesses in the comments if you think I'm going to beat this. Iomoth is first against King Crab. He uses Discharge, but we hit a quad effective Stomping Tantrum, taking it down in one. Next is Iron Thorns, and again, another quad effective Tantrum is just too much, and he finishes off with Earthquake. Bacon retaliates, and we switch to Smoketail when Iron Hands enters the field. We tag a Thunder Punch, and Psychic is sadly too short, so we fall. Bacon is back out and takes it down with another tantrum. Iron Jugglist is next and we hit hard with a couple of play roughs, bringing Iron Bundle out. It sets the snow, twice stupidly, meaning we can take it out. All that remains is Iron Valiant, who is quick to retaliate, but I send out Wellington to intimidate and hit hard with Zen Headbutt, taking it out. Toro was defeated and we hired Arvin to become my next chef. And with that, we are beating the game with food only. Thank you all for so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to give a big thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and ding on the notification bell. Also, a quick reminder to check out the sponsors of this video, Tokyo Shriek and Sakurako. But thank you all, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye!